lovely to be outside uh, in uh, lockdown and we can do that easily near where we are so we thank God for that. Uh, on Monday uh, I took a more extended time uh, to talk about the phrase uh, end the lockdown, save lives, love one another. Uh, and over these next three days I'd like to uh, address a bit more some of those uh, topics at one at a time. End the lockdown. Uh, I gave lots of reasons uh, in the vlog on Monday, uh, but here's one related to uh, economics. You might be surprised that that's the, the topic for uh, today. Here's the scripture from Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 17 and 18. You may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me, but remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth and so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your forefathers as it is today. So it's clear that it's God uh, who allows us to have the possibility of wealth creation. Uh, and that matters. Uh, some people have drawn a really unhelpful distinction, saying, if you want to protect the economy, uh, we want to protect health, uh, as if there's a kind of moral priority to that. But it's a false dichotomy. With a poor economy in Britain or the Western world, protecting the poor is going to be harder than ever. So we should end the lockdown because we want the economy to flourish. Uh, we know that every day that passes, unemployment for larger and larger numbers becomes a real possibility. You, you may not know uh, this, but the statistics seem fairly clear. For every 1% rise in unemployment, there's a 2% rise in chronic disease. The link is very, very clear. And so we must talk about economics and we must talk about after this lockdown, what kind of economic systems do we want? I believe that what God wants for our economic systems in the Western world are an economy which doesn't reward the indolent or lazy, but does protect the weak, the struggling, the vulnerable, the marginalised from society in far better ways than we have done before. An economy that works for everybody, that narrows the gap between the uber rich and the poor, and an economy that is kinder to people and kinder to the planet. Jesus himself was more interested in economics than you might imagine. It, for example, even if you take the, the, uh, the miracle which he wrought through the disciples uh, in Acts with Peter and John, at silver and gold have I none, he says to the man at the beautiful gate, but what I have I give you. Now, that looks like a healing miracle, but actually it's also an economic miracle. It's an economic miracle because that broken, paralysed, crippled man can now work, can have the dignity of working. Uh, and we know uh, that unemployment can cause terrible trouble for people with a deep sense of uh, lacking of self-worth, inability to provide for your family, uh, and the never-ending days of wondering what to do with yourself. It's devastating for people and families. So Jesus in this economic miracle through the disciples, what he's doing there is enabling him to play a full and committed part in society that he's never been able to do before. And so the economic implications of the health miracles of both Jesus in the Gospels and the New Testament church in Acts are often understated. God gives the ability to create wealth, and wealth, properly distributed, allows society to flourish. So we must continue to pray that lockdown will be ending soon, that employment possibilities will be provided, and that the terrible loss of, an, of employment will be mitigated uh, for many thousands, if not millions of people in the Western world. So pray for local businesses, pray for business generally, Pray for wise and thoughtful and honest employers and pray that our society will increasingly provide genuine business opportunities that create wealth, which provide a society which is fairer and more promoting of human flourishing than ever before.